Saya baru tahu kalau tahun 9 tahun 1969 itu ternyata ekspor Korea itu sudah weak. Mungkin dari dulu K-pop itu sudah ada gitu ya. Inti dari speech tadi adalah bahwa entrepreneurship itu makin human. Dan kita tadi belajar juga kalau brand Asia itu bilang brand yang kuat itu brand yang friendly. Dan tadi kelihatan kalau entrepreneurship itu tidak hanya untuk sukses tapi juga untuk human gitu, untuk human kind. Jadi sebetulnya arah entrepreneurship ke sana dan entrepreneurship itu ternyata mulai dari dream, dari bermimpi, kemudian harus propel dream itu dan terakhir harus ada sedikit aja unsur diferensiasi supaya bisa sukses uh, di antara entrepreneur yang lain. Next kita punya John Wilson. John Wilson ini datang dari London, dia sangat senang sekali ke Indonesia setiap kali, dia bilang mungkin kalau perlu berenang dari London dia akan berenang untuk bisa ke Indonesia. Kalau dia cuma boleh pergi se sekali dalam setahun oleh universitasnya untuk cuti mengikuti conferences mungkin ini pilihan dia. John Wilson ini unik uh, seorang muslim namanya Bilal juga uh, aka Bilal. Uh, he is the editor in chief for Journal of Islamic Marketing and also a professor at Greenwich University in London. He is really, really good. He is really, really good. You know why? Sebelumnya ada yang namanya Klaus Salminen yang harusnya bicara di uh, sesi ini tentang five second marketing challenge. Sayangnya, ibunda dari Klaus kena heart attack beberapa hari yang lalu. Jadi Klaus membatalkan datang ke Indonesia. Walaupun Klaus akan datang nanti di bulan Maret, dia akan datang lagi. Tapi kita baru minta kemarin ke John, we just asked John yesterday actually, to replace uh, Klaus, and he could talk about anything, basically John Wilson. Look at him, right? He's ready. So please welcome John Wilson. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's always good. I'll say it again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How cool is that? Being in London, you don't get such a response so often, right? Even though it's Londonistan, we don't hear that so much. Thanks very much, Irwan, for the, for the introduction. I don't think I can talk about anything. I think if I don't know something, then I shut up. <laughs> so I give the illusion of knowing more than I do. But thanks very much for Pak Karma One, for Dr. Zakaria, for Rob Walcott, and for all of the Kenyans for putting up with me for the past day and a half. It's been amazing, and it's really good to see you guys here. So as you know, I was given this topic um, last night. Now normally, when someone does that at university and they say, could you cover for somebody? Normally you get a USB with some slides, right? I have to say, I have to call people out. They said, can you do this topic? Uh, do you have any slides? No. Do you have any videos? No. Do you so, um, well, here you go. This is what I had to do. So, the topic for today is five-second marketing. That means that already I've had my five seconds, right? As far as most of you are concerned, you have already made up your mind about me and what I have to say. Your brain is already telling you the conclusions and the solutions to marketing in five seconds. Already you've thought, okay, do I listen to this guy or do I go and check my WhatsApp? Do I go and take a selfie and send it by line or do I take a picture of him and tweet it? The reason that you're thinking like this, there you go, there's a slight delay on the slide change, is because our brains work like this. There are basically four areas. We remember things, our memory, we have alertness, there's perception, and there's this thing called selective attention. Now, selective attention affects all of the rest of those. That means that for some of you already, you've had a bit too much food, you're falling sleepy. But if I say certain keywords like break, fire, I love you, your brain comes awake again, right? Key words bring you back into the room. Otherwise, my voice starts to get very quiet in your head. 
until you hear the keyword. Selective attention. We cannot leave our brains on for all of the time. So we switch them off every now and again. Or we use that brain capacity to think about something else. What will I do tomorrow? When am I going to get paid? What am I going to do over the holidays? So, the challenge for us marketers is this thing called selective attention. But I want you to think about something else. Over the past 10 years, what has changed? A lot of things have changed. Two things that really stick in my head as a marketer are YouTube, which is only 10 years old. Smartphones, less than 10 years old. YouTube is only 10 years old. What do I do with YouTube? What don't I do with YouTube? Are my Beats by Dre headphones fake or real? I'll ask YouTube. What phone cover should I buy? I'll ask YouTube. How do I cook beef rendang? I'll ask YouTube, right? What happened at the Mark Plus conference last year? I will ask YouTube. Marketers know this, and this is why they're on YouTube. And now, this is why our smartphones are getting bigger and bigger, and our thumbs are getting stronger and stronger, and our tongues are getting faster and faster, and our eye movements are getting quicker and quicker, and our attention span is getting smaller and smaller. So what do I do now that there is YouTube? Well, I'll tell you what I do. Click. The five second tap, right? That's your finger tapping, waiting to be able to click your mouse. When it says this advert will appear, or you can skip this advert in. Are you laughing at this? Do you have that feeling? I always have that feeling. It's the longest five seconds in the world. The four seconds is the longest four seconds in the world. Skipping four, three, please don't do this to me. I don't want to watch this. One, okay, now I want to watch. Even worse than that, the advert you can skip in 19 seconds. 19 seconds, are they for real? 19 seconds. Do I have 19 seconds? I don't have 19 seconds. Your brain says, in 19 seconds, what can I do? Uh, can I put on the kettle? Can I make a cup of tea? Can I text somebody? Can I, should I start a conversation with the person next to me that I should really be talking to? Should I read a newspaper? Okay, 13 seconds. Oh, my God. 12, 10, 8. Okay, skip. Even though I had that 19 seconds or that 5 seconds, did I pay attention? No because of selective attention. So, I'm waiting for the slide to click over. There you go. Let me give you an example of some adverts. Audi is the first example I'd like to give. Now what I've done is I've edited together two different commercials. The first commercial is classic television. Classic television advertising, the first few seconds. Very nice, very artistic, nice piece of music. Very boring. If you're a millennial, very boring. If you are a sales-driven marketer, well, I'm going to ask the question, where is the brand? I want you to look out in the first part of the commercial. Where is the brand? Where is the brand identity? Where is the personality? Where is the mention of the car? Where is the car that you're trying to sell? Nowhere. That's 20 seconds. We've already skipped. The next commercial afterwards I'm going to show you is also Audi. And this one is better, but it's still not five seconds, but it's better. If you can hook into this commercial, I'll tell you why it's better. Because it uses neuromarketing. And neuromarketing is good because it's trying to connect with your unconscious. I'll give you all of the tricks. In that neuromarketing Audi commercial, you will see the logo. You'll hear the volume go up and down just to get your mind to pay attention because dynamics are important. You will also see the smoke turn into horses, talking about horsepower. You will see train tracks. You will see lots of things in this commercial that will connect with your unconscious. So let's see these two commercials. This is the boring one. With feathers all stubby and brown And the other birds in so many words said Get out of town. The other commercial.
Welcome to the world of brain control. So in this commercial, you saw the logo. You felt your heart beat a little bit faster, right? You heard the volume go down and up. All of these things are trying to stop you from moving your mind to somewhere else. Neuromarketing, interesting, but still not part of the five second marketing challenge. Because if we look at typical viewing behavior, the next video I want to show you is what I believe is how we all behave in reality. What I've done is I've gone through YouTube surfing and I've edited together lots of different clips of YouTube in a way that I think you would click. Okay, bored, bored, bored. Oh, not so bad, bored. <laughs> and this is, I want, so I want you to lock into this and think this is how we actually um, engage with YouTube, the internet, and look at adverts. Now, the thing that you will notice is there's probably only one brand that you will see in this 60 seconds. And it'll be obvious which brand that is. There's one that you might notice, a telecoms brand. And then there are other brands which, because the advert didn't have the key message within five seconds, you won't see it. One of these commercials is from Dell, but you won't see Dell. One of these commercials is from Skechers Trainers, but you won't see that because it was too boring. So let's look at the typical viewing behavior. I have to go back. This is it. Can we, hang on. To me, they're like the greatest form of self-expression. People say I'm unique. Maybe it's because of my hair. Or maybe it's the way my nails match my mood. Oh. For me the noodle commercial was cool we watched it for longer that was one of the most popular commercials during the football world cup and it's obvious why that's the case right when's the last time you saw a samurai play football like that makes you want some noodles right so apart from a football playing noodle eating samurai the other thing that we've got to take into account is it's not just about video, but it's about how you write content online. Branded content, native content, and articles. Here's an example here. The same article was trialed. The one on the left, entitlements, face the truth or face the consequences. 895 views. The other one, 10 entitlement truths that will blow your mind. Well, you can see over 26,000 views. We only have five seconds to decide whether we click. Do we want to click this or do we want to skip that? So, what did I learn from some of these things? When I wrote an article, this platform is called Medium. The first thing I thought is, okay, numbers are good. Stops people wanting to click too soon. Six things public speakers can learn from stand-up comedians. You can see that I've written the article, but I'm still learning how to do stand-up, right? But the other thing that you maybe can see just at the top, the laser doesn't work this far, right at the top next to the afro, it says two minute read. The latest trend that's happening now is it's telling you before you read the article how long it will take you to read. This is the same thing that's happening with five second marketing. We don't even have time to read articles, two minute read. Another article that I wrote for my students at university because I got sick of saying the same things. This was me taking some notes 
I drew a diagram, I took a picture, and I wrote an article, eight top tips for dissertation students. Done. Two minute read. Right. I saved myself so many hours. Why would I want to stay in my office saying the same thing for 10 minutes to 20 people individually when I could give them a two minute read and a diagram? So numbers are important, whether you count them down or you count them out or you count them up. We are motivated by numbers, but numbers linked to emotions. Because it's not just about numbers. If I show you this slide, this is a slide that you will never see from Apple. This is probably the typical type of slide you will see, though, in most corporate presentations. If we worked for Apple and if we didn't know the style of Apple, probably you would put together a slide like that and think, that's a great slide. It tells them everything that they need to know. The display's there, the size is there, the storage is there, the processing speed. That's a great PowerPoint slide. No. It's a terrible PowerPoint slide. Why? Because when you see what they did produce, that was it. I mean, who really cares about how thin your notebook is? Did you care about thin notebooks until they told you that it was the world's thinnest? No, you didn't. When was the last time you said, excuse me, can I buy the world's thinnest notebook, please? I don't think you did. You wanted a laptop. But they understood the human connection, the psychology behind what motivates you. Something being the best. The best at something means that it's better than the rest. But they didn't stop there. There's this hovering MacBook Air. It's so light, it doesn't even touch the ground. <gasps> Even better, you can put it in an envelope. Find me somebody that puts their MacBook Air in an envelope. Anybody in this room? This is quite a good data sample. Hands up who puts your MacBook Air in an envelope. I didn't think so. But we can't help but think that that's cool, right? I bet for some of you that bought a MacBook Air, you said in your head or to your friends or to your family, yeah, but it fits in an envelope, an office envelope. Who cares? You did when you wanted to buy it because there was something connecting with your emotions that made you think, you know what? I don't care. I just want it. I don't know why, but I just want it. So, how do we do five-second marketing? The time is crucial. The place, the context, the culture, the emotions that we evoke are definitely important. The reason... If you can do all of those things successfully, you are going to have successful marketing. But there is a caveat attached. Who knows Usain Bolt? You were about to put your hand up and then you scratched your hair. Do you know Usain Bolt, yes or no? Okay, but you, oh, you've seen him before, right? Yeah, he's kind of six foot five. He's kind of fast. Right, he can run the 100 meters in under 10 seconds. And even that isn't good enough for you and your finger wanting to click a YouTube video, right? How many years does it take him to become the best at running the fastest? Well, it takes a lifetime, right? So if you want to be good at five-second marketing, it doesn't happen overnight. It is going to take years of practice, years of racing. might even take you a lifetime. But what other choice do you have with smartphones? smart minds, smart thumbs, and short attention span. Terima kasih. Thank you very much.